Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm playing through a brand new game I just got in, Massive Darkness 2 Hellscape. This is a new one from Come On Games. It is a 1-6 to six player game that takes roughly 1-2 to two hours to play, and is a fully cooperative dungeon crawling experience where you get to play the heroes, diving deep into the dungeons, trying to stay into the shadows, and completing different objectives as you play through a scenario or potentially a full campaign. So in this video, I'm going to be playing through the very first scenario, and I am fairly, fairly experienced with the first uh, Massive Darkness game, and I've just gotten this one to the table. I've only gotten a couple of playthroughs in it, so I do apologize if I make any mistakes, but let me know in the comments down below if you catch anything, as I am going to probably be looking at doing a full teaching video for this one as well. So I want to make sure I get everything correct in that one. So I'm going to be dropping this one first and seeing if anybody catches anything. So let me know in those comments down below. Also, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see around this one. I have an unboxing video already, and I will be having probably doing some other playthroughs of this one. The first one was a lot of fun, really enjoyed it, so I'm excited about this one and seeing what the differences are and getting this one to the table a number of times. So if there's anything else you'd like to see around this, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. All right, so the last thing I want to do is go through and talk about the mission we're going to be playing, outlining our objectives that we're trying to achieve with this one, and then I'm going to talk about each one of the heroes that I've selected for this. So first off, we have selected Highway to Hellscape. This one, the backstory to this one is the proliferation of portals around Krondar suggests some sort of horrific sacrifice has been made. There's nothing we can do about that, but we might as well take advantage of the situation. Something around here could lead to the Infernal Realm. We can take the battle to them this time, and as mad as that may seem. All right, so our quest objectives with this one are that we must complete these in order. First, we have to open the gates by pressing both of the switches, which we're going to find on these two areas here. Next, we have to enter hell. We are going to escape through the altar, which is this final objective point over here. So once we, can, once we hit both of those switches, then this door is going to open up and that will allow us to, to move into there. So then we have some special rules. First off, the gates. The door with the white outline, which is going to be this one here, right in front of that main entrance point, uh, allows creatures from the darkness to pass. Enemies can freely move through this door. Unfortunately for the Lightbringers, it cannot be opened by conventional means. In order to open the gate, the heroes must activate both switches. The gate blocks line of sight. Open the gates. The switches are represented by the color-sided objective tokens. Any hero standing in his zone with one of these objective tokens may spend one MP or one magic point to interact with that objective token and remove it from the dungeon. The hero that does this is going to gain three experience points. Next, we have the infernal reveals. As soon as both of the colored side up objective tokens are removed, the gate opens. Flip the door token indicated with the white outline to the open side and reveal the chamber as usual. And then finally, entering hell. Any hero on the altar zone marked by the gray objective token may spend one magic point to exit the dungeon. Once all heroes have exited, the quest ends in a victory. So that is our objectives. That is our goals for this one. And other than that, I selected to play as three heroes for this one. I have the rogue, which she is going to use her rogue abilities. And I selected the poison token, so I've added those to her bag already. So she's ready to go from there. The second hero I went with is the ranger. And so I have my arrow cards all shuffled up. And for his starting ability I or skill, I chose piercing arrow one. And this one is for each three arrows revealed on his arrow cards, the defender is at minus one defense. So I figure that might help me if I go up against some enemies that are heavily defended or have heavy armor. And then the final hero I went with is the paladin. So I really enjoy those kind of characters and he has his track all set up already. And for his uh, starting skill, I cho chose Boldness 1, and I went ahead and put this under his red skill, as I figured that might be handy to, to have multiple combat abilities uh, potentially being triggered at once. Other than that, we're ready to move in, and my heroes have started on up there, so I have to choose the order which I want to activate my heroes. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go with my ranger first as my ranger has plus one magic points or uh, movement points that she gets anytime she does a move. 
So with that, that could be really handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by spending my first action to move, which gives me three moving points. I'm gonna open this door for one, and that is going to trigger a door event. So let's go ahead and resolve that. So we have enemy plans. Spawn one mob on any portal, player's choice, and remove one from this chamber if possible. So we don't have a spawn point in that chamber. And so I do have a couple of different spawn points that I could potentially spawn from. So I have to choose which one that I want to do. And I guess since my heroes are in there, it might be good just to, to start picking on somebody right away. I would have liked to have the items first, but we'll have to work with that as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal a level one mob. We have some fallen angels. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those guys. I have the leader here. So I'll put him, try to get all these guys in here. Oop. All right, so I'll toss him in the back. And I'll bring his three up here. Now I have three minions with him because I'm playing with three heroes. And you'll always have a number of minions based on the number of heroes you're playing. Okay, and then I have to draw a mob card. And we have a staff of mana. This is going to be a magical attack at plus two uh, yellow dice. So I'll go ahead and toss that down here for now. And then finally, he has one treasure. So I have to draw one treasure token from the bag. And let's see what he is. It's a common item. So no, no luck there. All right, so that was my first moving point. Unfortunately, at this point, I don't really want to move in because I'm gonna have to deal with them. So I think I'm gonna stay here and attack. Uh, unfortunately, with my ranger, she is more, or he, I think it's a he. He's more adept at ranged, obviously ranged attacks than he is melee, but let's go ahead and do that. So with his melee attacks, he's simply going to get a yellow die. I don't believe he's going to resolve his arrow cards as he's not necessarily shooting. I think he's using his weapon as like a stabby weapon. So we're going to go ahead and roll his one. And then the enemy is going to receive three enemy dice, one for each minion that's out there. And then they also will receive two blue dice. And we are in a uh, lit space, so I will not get my shadow die either. So this is going to be a little more challenging here. But maybe we can chip away a little bit here and see what happens. Okay, so I did terrible. Uh, and not only that, the enemy does hit me for one, so I'm going to lose one hit point from that. And they blocked way more than I would have been able to do anything with anyways. All right, so that was my f second action. I have one left. I might as well try to, to attack again. Maybe I'll get lucky this time. Couldn't do any worse. Uh, well, yes, I could. <laughs> Leave it to the dice to prove me wrong. So I'm going to lose two more hit points. Again, I don't roll anything. And the funny thing with these yellow dice is they only have one blank side. And even in my practice game, man, that blank side came up a lot. <laughs> so the, uh, the bad luck continues, I think. All right. So unfortunately, that is the only thing that I can do on my turn for that character. So now I have to choose which other character I want to activate or which order I want to go in. So I think it might be good to go with my Paladin first as I can drop a Blessing and that might actually help a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. First off, at the beginning of my turn, I can choose to bless one of my skills. So this is the only one I have, so I'm going to go ahead and bless that. And then I'm going to spend one mana, which lets me drop one of my Consecration tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it in here, obviously. And this is going to give me one, uh, anytime I attack, I'm going to get plus one reroll and plus one attack uh, swords. And then for that, uh, he, his ability is that he gets to ignore a slash. So when the enemies attack, uh, he can evade or just uh, block one of those. All right, so let's go ahead and start off my first action with an attack. So he's gonna get one yellow die, and again, they're gonna get their massive complement of all those dice. 
But this time, I do get some rerolls, which I can use on enemy dice as well, which is going to hopefully be helpful here. So let's see if I get any better here. And still, that is killer. All right. Um, I have one block. So let's go ahead and reroll this one first. As I have a reroll here and a reroll there. So my first reroll is that. Which I think I'm going to, oh, I think I will stay with there. Okay. And then I could reroll that and try to get rid of that last shield. There's three sides. So I only have a 33% chance of not getting ones. I think I'm just going to leave it at that and stay there. As that will get me one sword, which is going to be canceled out here. But I do get one additional one here which is going to give me one damage at least. So that'll take care of half of one of the enemies. All right. Uh, then I will go ahead and attack again. and see if I can take one of these guys down here. All right. And I do get those rerolls again. The enemy's claws don't have any effects only when, attack, when the enemy attacks. So I don't have to worry about those right now. And this time... Got pretty much the same result. So I do have two rerolls. I will try to reroll this one. There's only, well, technically there's only one side with the better result. So maybe not. Well, I got two rerolls. I'm going to go ahead and try to reroll this and see if I can get a blank. That's a crack. So let's try it again. There we go. All right. So now I do two more damage. That is going to eliminate one of the minions. And... That'll get me one experience point. And that is my last action. So that'll take care of my turn. And then it's over to the rogue to go. So with the rogue, I'm going to just go ahead and leave these dice out. Now she will draw tokens from the bag. She's going to draw three tokens during her turn. So let's see what she gets. She has move up to two, then attack. That one, That's not going to do me a whole lot of good right now. I have a plus one yellow on an attack and poison. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the poison first. This one is when performing an attack action with a poison token, place it next to the defending enemy until it is killed. When killed, return the token to the bag. Enemies with a poison token are poisoned and an enemy can only have one poison token at a time. All right. So let's go ahead and use that one first and we'll see if we can get through a little bit here. Now I have a choice on my weapon here. I have the dagger which gives me attack and it's going to give uh, it's going to cost me one mana and then the defender is at minus one defense so that could be useful and I also have combat one mana and that one is going to let me reroll one. And I already have the reroll one in that from my Paladin as well. So let's see what happens here. All right, so we got some nastiness from the enemies here. They got two defense and the claw. Um, so I got the reroll here. So let's go ahead and reroll and see if we can shave off one of those defenses. All right. And then I will spend one here to reroll another. So I'm going to reroll this enemy die and see if I can avoid that. Nope. <laughs> I got the, rid of the claw, but not the slash. So she is going to take a wound from that. And then I'll resolve my attack. I'm going to do two damage. They're stopping one point of that. So one's going to get through and will defeat another minion. So she's gonna pick up another experience, or a experience point for that. That will drop another one of their black dice. And then it's gonna go, and they are poisoned. So I'll go ahead and drop a poison, that poison token on there. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one next. It's gonna get me another yellow die. All right, and that'll flip over. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. All right, so we got two defense and two swords. 
I get the one reroll, so I'm gonna go ahead and reroll this and see if I can get a little bit better. And I got two more. So one's gonna cancel out the two defense, and two are gonna get through with one more. So I'm gonna do three damage. So that'll take care of the final minion. And that'll add one damage to the leader. All right, so then that final black die goes away. And I do have, this one lets me move up to two and then attack, which isn't gonna do me any good with the enemies or the enemy already in that space. So I might as well try to finish him off. Um, so now I'm only gonna get the one. He's still gonna get his two blue. And let's see what happens here. I just need one damage. Oof. All right, so I get my reroll. So let's see if I can get a blank on this. I got one. All right, so I could spend the one for... I'm going to do the one on the sword. That's going to get it minus one defense, which will turn that into a blank, basically. The one's going to get through, which is enough to take care of the leader. And so he will be eliminated. Um, so I got an experience point for the previous guy I killed. And then the leader gives me one. And then I also will get two for defeating that guy. So she's at five. And then both of my other heroes are at two because they get experience points for def uh, as the mob leader goes down. All right, so she ended up having five points on that one. She was really doing well. All right, that was her last action. And the Consecration stays there, but the Poison goes away. So these will just kind of be stacked up. The Poison was supposed to go back in the bag, so I'll put that one back in there. All right. Uh, from there, then I also get the items. So the item itself comes straight into my hand, which is a Wizard's Wand. Not going to do me a lot of... Well, I could use it, technically. And it would give me two dice... But I think I'm just going to keep it off to the side for now. And then I do get a common treasure as well. And then I'll go ahead and discard that. I'll just put that up there. So common treasure is a arming sword. So this is... Hmm. That's pretty nice. I will... I'm going to go ahead and arm her with that. Add that in there. And she can kind of dual wield those, I think. Right, that goes back in the bag. All right. And that will finish off my hero's turn. As all three heroes have used all their actions now. All right. So then each one of the mobs is going to activate in the dungeon. So we'll go ahead and activate the uh, skeletons first. They cannot attack. So they're simply going to move and they get two actions basically so they're going to move one space per action so they're going to go ahead and slide on up here as they're going to go by the shortest path to get to me and then the satyrs are also going to go so they're going to move two over to the entrance point there and again this is going to not stop them so they will be able to continue moving in that area because this door does not block them normally doors do but this one said specifically in the instructions that it didn't all right, so that's going to finish the enemy phases or the enemy phase or activation. So then we're going to move into the, um, what's it called? It is the level up phase. So the heroes must spend experience points to level up. So my rogue did have enough uh, experience for her first level as level two is only five experience. So she'll drop back down to zero. That's going to get her plus one to her maximum hit points. So she'll pick that up. And then she's also going to add a rare to the treasure bag. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop that in there. All right, and then she gets a new skill. So she can choose either a level one skill or a level two skill. So let's see what we got here. So as a level two skill, she has the toolkit one. At the start of your turn, you may add a random face-up spike trap to a zone a zone in range 0 2 if possible. This trap only affects enemies. Trap damage times 2. Action move yourself to a trap up to one zone away and remove it without suffering its effects. 
So that's kind of nice. Or we can do rehearsed tricks. At the start of your turn, you may rotate this card to exhaust it. Place back the tokens you drew and draw three new tokens. Refresh this card when refilling the bag. Okay, uh, that's not too bad. Or we can go with the deadly mixture. Um, actually, this is the one I'm supposed to have. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so then we have uh, shadow form. When you gain this skill, gain tokens shadow times two. And these are going to be a shadow. So if I'm in a shadow zone, my attack is plus one. My attack uh, is going to cost one, and I can add another sword to it. Uh, and then, or I can do tailored swiftness, which I think I'm going to do this one. When you gain this skill, gain tokens, draw one token after this action, and plus two my movement points. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. So I'm just going to add that over there. These will go back on here. And then I have to pull those two from the bag. So I need the plus two movement point one. So there's one of those. And then I need to do this one. So that potentially will give me four actions during my turn if I happen to draw though that token. Okay. So then that's the end of the experience phases. The other two heroes do not have enough for that. And then the final phase in the round is the darkness phase. So this one is going to have us moving the token one space up on the track. And I think that's pretty much it. It's advanced darkness once on the track. And then if there's something above it, then we'll have to resolve it. These first couple aren't. The next one over is going to have us dropping a wandering monster. So a roaming monster. So we definitely want to be careful on that. All right. So these tokens will get flipped back over, and it's back into the hero phase. All right, well, that was uh, not what I was expecting last time. So we do have a couple of treasures that are sitting there for us that could be pretty handy. My ranger took some pretty good damage there. Let's go ahead and... Well, let's go ahead and start by doing a move action. I'm going to go ahead and go with the ranger again. Um... Might as well at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and move in. And then uh, and then I have to. I forgot to draw when I opened that door. So let me go ahead and remove these two real quick. And pick those two up. Or place those two. First off. Should have done that first. Common and a rare. Okay. Then I have two moving points left. Uh, I can spend each moving point to pick up one of these. So obviously I'm going to pick up both of these for my last two movement points. And I'll just toss these off to the side somewhere. All right, so I get a common item. So my common item is Focus Potion. Combat, I can reroll twice, or two. So I'll go ahead and toss that down here with his consumables. He has a Health Potion, and now the Focus Potion. And then for the Rare Treasure, I have a, a runic ring. So this is an action. It costs an action to do this. And I can move one mob, uh, move one mob in line of sight, one zone. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So from there, then that was my first complete action. So I'm going to go ahead and take another move action now. So let's go ahead and move one, two, and open this door. Okay. So now... We do have a mob in there, but first off, we have to do the door card. So let's go ahead and handle that first. So we have the fire chamber, the active hero, and all mobs spawn in this chamber. Spawned in this chamber will take one. So active hero is going to take a fire. So I'll just go ahead and drop that on his card there. And then the mob that's going to spawn here will also take fire. I'm going to double check on how that works again. So then we have to spawn a mob in here for this token here. So I'll just toss that up there. So it's a it's still going to be a level 1-2 uh, mob. As anytime you're drawing one of these, you're going to look at all the heroes. And the highest hero is going to dictate what mob or what mob card you pull. We do have the rogue that's level 2, but we're still working with level 1-2 cards. All right, so we have infer the Infernal Imps. So these guys... Uh, oh, they got some defensive abilities here. All right. Um, these are going to be these dudes here. Okay. So they're going to go back into there. 
go out and drop the big guy back there. Keep these guys there. All right, so they got a fire on them. And then they are going to draw a card. So they have a crossbow. That's great. And then we also get a treasure token on there. All right, so this is a common. And then we also have two treasure in here. So we have a common and a rare. All right, so those will also go away. All right, so that chamber's got some... Some decent stuff in it but we also have some nasty guys so these guys on defense if they roll the claw you kill one imp and then deal one wound to each hero in the attacker's zone Oof. all right so i was in there so that was one two three so that was my second action already i have one action remaining uh, and then I let's go ahead and take a look at fire real quick. I gotta double check that. Um, as soon as this miniature or mob activates, roll one for each fire token on it. The miniature or mob suffers one wound for each sword rolled. Then remove all fire. Okay. Um, so I've already activated. So I would believe that I would act. I would have to handle this next. My next activation. So that's what I'll I'll go ahead and do. And then has the ranger. Hmm. It might be better just to stay there for the time being. Not the other heroes go on in there, try to handle them, get ready for that other one up there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and spend my last action to heal, which uh, recover lets me heal up to two health. So I'll go ahead and do that. And that will finish off my character's turn there. So I have two characters left. And... Mm. This gets flipped back over at the end of the round. What to do? Do I go with the Paladin or the Rogue? Um, well, Rogue's got the nice sword, so she could kind of probably get in there and take care of some of them. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll go with her next. She's gonna she's gonna be jumping up levels pretty quick here, I bet. All right, so we got plus one movement, another plus one movement, and final token. And a combat one. All right, good. That'll actually work out pretty well. All right, so I'm going to do my first action for this one. It gives me plus one movement points. So now she's got three. So one, two, and three gets her right up in there. Her second action, I'm going to go ahead and attack with this one. That gets me another yellow die. And then I'm also going to get one from my arming sword now. And then the enemies are going to get one blue. I am in a darkness zone, so I'm going to get my shadow die. And the enemies are going to be rolling three enemy dice. That's a lot of dice there. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, so the enemies have gotten one slash so far. I got my shadow skill. I get to draw a rogue token that basically gives me another action. So that's cool. It's be another move action, potentially. And they got one there. And they also do one damage to me, so I'm going to lose one health on that one. All right, so I've taken care of that. I took care of those dice of theirs. They did roll one defense. They didn't roll any claws, so there's no effect there. And I'm going to go ahead and spend... Well, I get plus one there as well. So the plus one is going to negate that. So I could spend that to take care of the one defense, but I think I'm good with that. So then I'm going to use these three to take out one of the minions there as they have three hit points apiece. So he's gone and I gain an experience point. All right. For my second attack, or 
or for another attack. I'm going to go ahead and drop one of those. I'm going to go ahead and use this one here. And then I will go ahead and roll these again. Now I lose the one yellow because I got the one for that other action die. All right. Oof. All right. So we got two claws. The defense. And I did pretty well on my stuff. All right, so, well, each one of these is going to kill an imp and deal one wound to each hero in the attacker's zone. So she's going to take two wounds from that. And then two of these guys are going to go. And I don't know if I get experience for that. I would, oh, it's once per roll. Okay, so only one guy goes. Um, but I would, I'm not sure if I would get experience for that. So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, I'm going to lean more on the side of caution on that and just say that I will not be getting it. All right. So I took care of that. The enemy has one defense. I did roll or I have one plus one there. So I'm going to have three, uh, yeah, three, four, five total. He gets one. So he's going to block one. So that's going to bring me down to four. So I think I'm good with that. So I'm going to go ahead and kill another one of these guys. That's going to bump me up another experience points. And then one damage on to the, the leader. I have one action remaining. So I'm going to go ahead and hit him again. Might as well. All right. So that'll get me all of this. All right, he got a good roll there. My shadow die lets me draw another rogue token. Gets me poison. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and spend one to reroll combat. So I'm gonna reroll that. All right, so it drops it down to one. So the one will get taken out by that. And I got these two, which will finish him off. And then I'll just remove the fire token because he's dead. So it's not going to matter. All right. So I'm going to get the experience for that. And then I get two more for defeating him. Each one of my other heroes is going to pick up two as well. All right. And then I will get the treasure. So I've got the, the crossbow there. It's a single hand weapon, gives me a ranged attack. I think I'm just going to hold on to that though. Because I could get it over to my character there as well. And then I do get to draw a common treasure. And we have an experience charm, gain plus three XP. So I'm going to just add that to my area because she's got quite a bit so I, I might be better to get it to one of the other heroes to help them out as uh, I don't want her going up too quick so I think that's the the safer choice with that and then she has another action <laughs> my goodness okay so I'll spend that one to get two movement points go ahead and move into this area for one and We'll go ahead and pick up this common item here for my last action or last point. So that's another common item. So I have a greater healing potion, heal five. That's pretty good. And she's down to two hit points. So that would be handy as she does have six. So she's lost four hit points at this point. All right. Uh, that is going to finish off her turn. So then these tokens will just be placed off to the side. That enemy has been defeated, so I'll add that over there. And it's over to the Paladin to go for his last, or for his turn. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up, as I can do that for free. And I will go ahead and bless that skill. And then my first action, I'm going to move into here. Second action, I get two more movement points. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this rare token here. 
and the treasure, which is going to get me two common as well. So this will go back in the bag. All right, so the, I'll handle the comments first. So I got the scroll of enhancement. Uh, you may use an ability of an equipped item. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And then second common item is throwing knives. Deal three wounds to one enemy in line of sight. Okay. That's pretty good. And then finally I get my rare treasure and this is a runic ring. So I got another one of those. I did shuffle this, I swear. <laughs> okay. So that was my second action. I have one left. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and drop this thing out here. And I could do that one as well to get plus one movement points in the zone that we're in, which I think I'll do. So I'm going to drop this one in here with us. Gives us a little bit extra there. Um, my last action, I'm going to go ahead and do a recover and gain two MP back. All right. So that is the end of his turn. Oh, I could have done a trade as well. Nah. Okay. All right, so then it's gonna go into the enemy's turn. So first off with the skeletons, they only have a melee weapon, so they're gonna move in here. Enemies do not trigger traps, unless it's a trap that's dropped by one of my characters as she does have that skill. So they're gonna move there. And then these guys are gonna move up. One, two. All right. Uh, that was all the enemies, as they, neither one of those could attack yet. Uh, next turn, maybe. Then the experience phase. So she's not going to go up until she gets 10 XP, so not yet for her. And my archer has been, or ranger has not been doing very well either. So nothing for him yet. And the paladin does go up, though. So he's going to get, or he's going to be level 2 now. And then he gets a new skill. So let's go ahead and see what I got here. All right, so his stuff's a little weird as, okay. He's got the blessing side. All right, so let's see here. We have uh, Echoing Hollow. This consecration also affects one other adjacent space. Okay, so that could be good. And then we have Divine Protection. Heroes may target this zone if possible to attack an enemy in another consecrated zone. All right. Then we have Banish. These are level one cards. So this is Banish. Uh, it's one magic. Move one enemy in this consecrated zone by one. We have Life Linked. The Paladin may take wounds instead of another hero in this consecrated zone. I think I'll do the, um, so I think I'll do the Echoing Hollow, as that lets it affect two zones, and I'll go ahead and do the MP on that one. And the blessed side of that, uh, heroes moving through the affected zone, ignore reaction damage. Okay, so not bad. Okay, so then that'll go back up top there. And that was the end of his turn. All right, so then the final step is the darkness phase. So now we're gonna have a roaming monster come out. So let's find out what we get here. So we have the ghoul. All right, and the ghoul is going to come out here. Looks like a nasty customer, and he's gonna have five hit points per hero. So I'm gonna drop two fives on there, and five singles. All right, and for now, I'll go ahead and drop him here. He's gonna be a little bit before he gets to us though. And then I also have to drop a couple treasure tokens on him, as he's got two treasures that are randomized. 
All right, so we have a common and another common. So two commons, and then he also gets a rare. All right, let me flip these back over, and we're ready to start a new round. And I think at this point, I'm going to take a couple turns off camera, and then we'll be back to see how our heroes are doing. All right, so we're back after a round, and I wanted to do this one on camera because, man, things got crazy. So we were able to clear out the uh, Hoarder Skeletons with my Ranger. Did a great job with that. And then I started to get into position as the other, the Satyrs and that were going to be moving up. I decided at the last minute with the Rogue to open that door as one of her last actions. And uh, with the door card, it ended up doing her having a dual chamber effect, which opened up another chamber that was close to it, which opened this one up as well. So now we have two new mobs coming our way, the gargoyles and the fire entities. So I'm gonna have to deal with both of those on top of the satyrs and the roaming monster who is moving crazy fast, trying to get to me as uh, his ability lets him really fly through this cor these corridors. So I'm ready to move back into it. We'll see what happens this round. Like I said, this is one I wanted to show you as it looks like this one's gonna be pretty exciting. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, I'm gonna go with my rogue first. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw her tokens. And she's only got two left in her bag. So we're gonna have a poison and a movement. And then these will go back in and she's gonna draw one more. So hopefully it'll be another good combat one. And it's plus one yellow die. All right, that'll work. All right, so she is going to start us off. Uh, I do have the red consecration in there, um, which the blessing is going to go away. So right now it's just going to give me plus one attack rerolls. So let's go ahead and start off by... I'm going to go ahead and do that first attack with the plus one yellow die. So that's going to get me one, and then I'm going to get one for each of my weapons. As they are both melee weapons, I get to dual wield them. And then the fire entities is going to re are going to receive one blue. I will get the purple shadow die, and they're going to get three enemy dice. So this will be this will be a big one here. All right, and they don't have any other perks or bonuses. Well, combat, anytime they roll a claw, they're gonna add one fire to an attacking or defending hero. So that's not too good. But I do have the, the club here, which is also going to do on an attack, if you took at least one wound in this attack, deal one wound to a defender. So I get to retaliate if they, uh, if they start hitting me. So let's see what happens here. Oof, all right. Uh, so I do get a re-roll, so let's go ahead and re-roll this one. Try to add some more, there we go. And they did two damage to me, so I'm gonna take two hits. From that, I will deal one additional wound because of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bump that up by one. My sword does plus one, so that's gonna take care of that. So then all of this is just straight damage. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Each Infernal has three hit points. So that'll take care of two of those. So two guys will go down. I'm gonna pick up two experience points for that, which puts me at seven. And that will take two dice away. So I'll go ahead and drop those. And as my second action, I'll go ahead and do a poison attack. So I will lose one yellow. And let's see what happens here. This is cracked, so I'll go ahead and roll that. It's another claw, so it's going to do another wound to me, which I'll do another wound back to him for that. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and clear this with that, so I don't have to worry about tracking that. Then I have plus one for this, so that's going to give me two. So that'll give me six again. So that will finish off the other two guys. So I'm going to pick up an experience for him. And then this guy is the leader. So I'm gonna get one for that. And then I'm also gonna pick up two more for killing that guy. So I'm at 11 now. And then each one of my other guys will pick up two as well. All right, she's got one action remaining. So she could jump into there and start picking up some, some stuff. She, get, she does have the plus one movement point. So that would be pretty handy as well. 
So I think I will do that. So I'm going to spend that. That'll give me um, my last action will move. So I get two plus the one. So one, two. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of these common items. Add that back in there. Okay. Let's see what she gets here. So she has the Morning Star. Ooh, that one's tasty. It's got an orange dye on it. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go ahead and replace the, the Primal Club. That one. All right. Um, that is it for her, to, as that was her three actions. So then we are on to one of the other two to go. So I'm going to go ahead and trigger the Ranger next. Uh, or do I? Mm, no, I think I will go with the Paladin next. So that will finish her off. So the Paladin, he's going to, he's in that space with them. So he's going to need to do some attack. And, um, so he's going to get one yellow die. So he's still struggling a little bit. Hopefully we'll be able to take care of this. He did have some throwing daggers, so that's why this uh, this enemy group was a little weakened. There is one guy with one hit point on him already as well. So that's why you'll you notice that. Um, oh, and I almost forgot to handle the rest of the stuff with her. So she did defeat the infernal entities, so she is going to get one common item for that as well, which is the serrated axe. This is a two-handed weapon. I ignore one of the slashes. Defender suffers an, uh, it instead of you. Ooh, jeez. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, ooh, yeah. I think I will. I think I will equip that. And then they also drop the. Skeleton blade. This is Attack I have to spend one and I get to heal one. So that's kind of nice And then these guys are gone. Okay now I can go into this one. All right, so I'm gonna get two for that the uh, Gargoyles drop them down almost forgot to and I forgot to grab a uh, Potion thingy for them too Okay, so it's a common it's all right Okay, they get one blue, and I am in a darkness space, so I will get my purple die. And I think that's it. On defense, if they get the hands, they're get, gonna get plus one shield. Okay. All right, so they did pick up a defense. I did very well. I do get, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that one for the blessing. Yep. And I do get a reroll if I want one. So I could try. I do get two rerolls because of the sword as well. So I might as well try and see if I can get rid of that. Uh, do I push it? Because now I only have one. So uh, there is one shot at getting two. Yeah, why not? And of course I got two naturally. Well, I decided to push my luck. That's what I get. All right, so I'm going to do... I have four damage. They're going to soak two of it. And that is all. So they're going to take... So basically one will go down. I'm going to pick up an experience for that. And so that'll lose one die there. This carries over to him then, basically. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another attack. So I got, this is my second action now. So my second attack. See if I can get him here. All right, so I got the claw. I do get re-rolls here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to re-roll the purple die once. And that's definitely not going to help me, so let's try one more time. All right, so that helps a little bit. The claw gets them one defense. So basically, that's going to negate one there. I got the two here. And that's pretty much all I can do for now. So that's going to eliminate 
One will go to him, and then the leader is going to pick up one as well. Okay. Um, well, then I have to spend my last action to try to finish him off. I don't want to leave him behind. So let's see what happens here. All right, and I get two re-rolls. That was a terrible roll. Um, Shadow. Every hero in a consecrated zone performs a free recover after this attack. Hmm. Well, I'm the only one that's in there. Right now, I, I'm, I'm pretty good. So I think I'm going to go ahead and re-roll both of these. Let's see what I get here. There we go. That's a lot better. And I pick up four damage. I only needed one. Uh, so that will take care of the leader. So I'm going to pick up one experience point for that. Oop, I think I moved the wrong guy's post. Yeah, I did. All right, so he's going to be back there. He's going to actually going to go back up because of the leader being killed now. All right, so I'm going to pick up one, two for that, for killing those other two guys. And then I picked up one for the leader. And then I'm going to get two more for that. And then also my rogue will pick up two for that. Uh, that is all of that stuff. Now I get stuff. So the gargoyles have a common item. And so I have an endurance potion plus three defense uh, blue dice. So that could be very handy. And then they were defeated. So I get the stone knuckles. Attacks... On attacks, I ignore one claw, and it's going to give me one yellow. So for now, why not? Uh, until I get something a little bit better, if I can get over to where the rogue is, or she comes over where I am, that'll definitely be more beneficial, so I can trade with her. But it'll work for now. All right, so that is the end of his turn. So I got just my ranger left. So with my ranger, I'll go ahead and start off by doing a move action. So I'm going to move her or him there. And then let's go ahead and do the second action. I'm going to go ahead and attack those satyrs. So they have three hit points apiece. So they're kind of nasty. They are going to get one blue and their three enemy dice. And then for my character, I'm going to get a yellow. And I'm in the red zone, so I'm going to get some benefits from that. And, and then I have to do my arrow cards. So... Ooh, that's a four, and I'll go ahead and draw one more, so that's a, at six, so not quite enough for the top one unless I want to push again. I, I think I'm going to hold off there for now. So I can spend a magic to give the defender a frost token, which could be beneficial depending upon what happens there. All right, and it is minus one to their shields, so unless they do... Crazy good. I'm gonna have some some decent hits here, and then I do. I am in a darkness up, so I will get the purple die. All right. Wow, they got three claws, which doesn't do them any good on defense, which is awesome, because that would have been really bad. Uh, so the arrows will go through that, which I did have the uh, piercing arrow as well, so that's negated. And I'm gonna do four damage plus the one for that. And I'm gonna hold that, as I don't, there's not, not much I could do much better than that. So that is going to be five damage on the satyrs. That'll eliminate one of them. Giving me an experience point, puts me at 10. And that's going to also put two on another one. All right, so I've got one action remaining. I have to do pretty good again, but let's go ahead and try and see what happens here. All right, so I gotta clear this, and then let's go ahead and draw my next one here. All right, so I got a three, four. Mm. I'm gonna push. And I got seven. All right, so I get my top ability. And I also trigger my fire arrow ability. So this one is the defender takes one fire damage. If there's anybody left after this, hopefully not. Then add one to the attack. So I'm going to get one yellow for that attack. 
And then the top ability is I'm going to get two rerolls plus two damage, and I'm going to get to add a yellow or an orange. So I'm going to definitely add that orange in there as well. So this is a big one here. Awesome. All right. Okay, so they did a little bit better this time. So I gotta choose how I wanna do this. I do have, I have two re-rolls, plus I got one for that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll the purple and this slash one here first off. So that's two out of the three. All right, so now I'm just to a slash. This one lets me discard an arrow card and gain the top ability effect. Sure, let's go ahead and do that and see what happens there. So this is minus two armor. All right, sure, that'll work. And then I get one more reroll. I don't really wanna take that damage, so let's see if I can get something else. I get the claw instead, all right. So that works out. So the defense is shot. They don't have any defense because I've got more than enough to get through all of their stuff. And then for damage, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight damage. I'll make sure there's nothing else here. Nope. So that's it. So eight damage. One of that's going to take out this guy, leaving seven left behind. Three more will be four left behind, and he will be toast with one left behind. All right, so I'm gonna pick up two experience points for the two minions, one for the leader, and then I pick up two more for the, uh, the leader on that. So each one of my other characters will pick up two as well. All right, that was his last action. So that was really successful with that. We were able to clear all three mobs and then I do get the benefits from that. So first off, I get a rare token or rare treasure. So this is the Seer of the Future. Magic attack, reroll all defense dice that weren't blank. And it's uh, two yellows. Okay, so that's pretty decent. I'll go ahead and throw it in there for now. Could potentially use it instead of making my ranged attack. And then these guys drop the Serrated Dagger. This is a melee attack. Defender is at minus one, and it gives me one of those. All right, this goes back in the bag, and the satyrs are gone. All right, so that is all three of my characters. I've used all of my actions. Then it is going to move into the enemy phase. Um, all right, so basically the only enemy out there right now is the the uh, the ghoul. And with him, he's going to trigger one of his abilities. So the first one is if there is a minion in the ghoul's zone, kill the minion in that zone, player's choice, and the ghoul heals five health. There aren't any. So then next I would go down and otherwise the ghoul moves three zones towards the closest hero and attacks them if possible. So one, two, three, and he is a melee enemy. So I, he will not be able to attack. And yep. All right. So that is it for him. So that will end the that phase or the enemy phase. So then we're into experience. So my character here has 15. So she is going to level up as you only need 10 for level three. So now she's at five points and she's gonna pick up another health or nope, just a, a, a magic. So she's gonna get one magic as the max health is doesn't carry over its it only, it, for whatever reason, they added it in as well. And then we are going to add a epic treasure to the bag now. So there's a potential to get some epic stuff at this point. Okay. And then she gets to pick a skill. So that is, she's level three now. So she could go all the way up to level three stuff. 
So let's see what we got for level three. So level three is Tailored Swiftness 2. When you gain this token, uh, you can add these in there and you can remove any other two tokens. Okay, so that's interesting. Or I can do Shadow Form 2. When you gain this skill, gain two shadow tokens, remove two, any other, or two of the other tokens. And then a shadow attack is, lets me spend, or I have to spend a magic and add plus two successes to that. Or I can do Deadly Mixture 2. When you gain this skill, gain two poison tokens, remove two other tokens. Poison enemies take four wounds at the start of their activation. Or I can use any of the other ones. Okay. But I would need the Shadow Form 1 to be able to, to put the Shadow Form 2 in. So I think I'm going to do the, the Tailored Swiftness 2. All right, so that lets me, first off, gain a skill, gain these tokens. I'm going to gain those two tokens. So I see the one there with the orange. And there's the green underneath that. Okay, and then I get to remove two other tokens. So, which ones do I want to take out? I could do the, the re-rolls. I think I'll take out one move. So that's... Hmm. And I'll take out one yellow. Because then that still leaves me with a couple of yellows in there and that. So that's pretty good. All right, so then these will go off to the side. All right, so that was her. That is the most that she can do. Over to my ranger. He is at 15 as well. So he's gonna drop down and pick up his third level. Again, he's going to gain another magic. His health is already maxed out, and we will add another epic in there. And then my last character is going to go up as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that now so that I don't have to do that again afterwards. And then I have to choose a skill. So Ranger level all up to level 3. Let's see what we get here. So we have Piercing Arrow 2 for each two arrows revealed. The defender is at minus one defense. I can do fire arrow two, defender takes two fire, then add to the attack a yellow or an orange. That's pretty nice. Or valley two, volley two is ranged attack magic. Each other enemy in line of sight takes two wounds, but I don't have the first one yet for that. I think I'm gonna take fire arrow two as the other one isn't uh, as effective, or yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's going to replace Fire Arrow 1. So I'll just put that over it. All right, and that takes care of all of his stuff. So then over to my last character, he again will gain a new item. I'm going to drop him down to one hit, one experience point. And then I'm going to flip these over as so level three. Okay. So let's see what we got here. So I can do lifelink two. I don't have lifelink one. I have boldness two, which gives me two rerolls on attacks. So that would be pretty good. Banish two. Which I don't have banished one yet. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Boldness 2. So I'm just going to replace Boldness 1 with that. Toss that back in there. All right. All right, and then the final step is to move the gauge up, and that's going to have a new mob come out. So now I'm going to have a, a level 3, 4 mob. So we have some more skeletons pouring out, and they are going to have a skull axe. Ooh, two orange on attack, so I do not want them attacking if possible. <laughs> Man. All right, and they're going to spawn back here. I, I did double check that, and the uh, 
mobs always spawn in the green zones. The blue zones or purple zones are for the roaming monsters. So I, luckily I got that correct when I dropped it in there. But for future, that's important. All right. Let's see. Could be could be great to have a legendary here. No, nope, just common. All right. Uh, that was the end of that. So that will be the end of the round. We're ready to move into a new round. All right, so who do we want to go first? Um, I'm gonna go with my, I'm gonna go with the Paladin first. And I will, hmm. We got a big nasty enemy sitting right there. It'd be great to get those other items, but at this point, if I can clear him out, he's got 15 hit points. So it might be good to start working on him. Um, let's go with... Might be better just to start off with him. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with the Ranger. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and make an attack action. So I'm going to reveal arrow cards. There's two, three. So let's go ahead and I got to shuffle these up. Let's see what happens here. So he's going to be rolling two blue and a black. All right. And yes, I'll go one more. All right, so that's five. Odds are I'm not going to get more than that. All right, so I'm going to stay with that. This gets me a magic back, lets me ignore one slash, and I can spin a magic to go punch her through two defense. Uh, but I already have the piercing arrow, which is going to, for every three arrows up here, I can negate, so I'll negate one right off the bat. And I won't be able to use the fire arrow. All right, so he's going to get two in that. I'm going to be rolling this and a yellow. That's all I get for that. All right, let's see what happens here. That's my first attack. All right, so no defense. He does, he does have a slash, which I get to ignore, so that's all of that. And I'm going to do... I can reroll up to twice... There's no point in necessarily rerolling at this point. So yeah, I think that'll be good. So three damage onto him. I don't have any any other effects. So three wounds. Let's go again. It's my second attack. Or second action. All right, we got a two, a one, and a three. So six again. Uh, I don't think I'm going to push it. So I'm going to get the middle column again. So I'm going to get a re-roll. I could spend one magic to gain plus one sword, and I get a yellow. It's not too bad. All right. So could have been a little better. All right, and there's no mobs right now, so this isn't going to have any bearing. I will go ahead and start by re-rolling this one. I get that. I got one more re-roll, or I got two more from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go again. And one more time. Ugh, very, very poor. All right, so second attack. I get um, two damage. I could spin a magic to get three. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So it's three more damage. So that's gonna put that up and one more. Okay, um, and then last attack. This is my last action. Let's see what I get this time. Come on, there's a four. And a two. Ugh. So it's plus two magic, minus one shields. 
I could push and try to get the last one. If I fail, I'm minus one magic and I take a damage. Oof. Odds are not in my favor on this. I'm going to stay with it. So I do lose that yellow from that one. All right, so he, got, he picks up a slash. I got three damage there. I get two re-rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with this one here. Picks up a sword. And go ahead and re-roll that. All right, so that's a blank. All right, so I do four damage. And I will negate that one point of damage there, or one armor. So that is going to be four damage onto him, which is going to take care of that. So he's down to five hit points. All right, pretty good. I'll take that. So that was my ranger's turn. All right, then we are on to, let's see, who do I want to go with next? Um, let's go with the Paladin next. Let me see if I can maybe finish him off with the Paladin first. So the Paladin, I'm going to go ahead and pick up both of these. I will bless this one here, giving me the two rerolls and plus attack. And I will spend a magic to drop that in his zone. I will do my first move or first action to move into there. And second action, we go ahead and attack. So I'm going to get two yellows. I am going to get the purple. He gets his two defense and one black. All right, and I think that's about it. All right. So, oof. All right. Uh, I get plenty of rerolls. I got three rerolls total. So I'm going to go ahead and reroll the purple and this blue. That was a little better. And I got one more reroll. I'm going to go ahead and reroll the purple one more time. Come on, for a little bit better of an attack. No. Okay. So that didn't work out. But I do get to negate one slash. So I don't take any damage. And then I get plus one attack here. And that is it. So I'm going to do three damage to him. All right. I got one action left. I'm going to go ahead and try to finish him off here. So we got two hit points left. All right. So he's got no defense and his enemy died and do anything either. Really helpful. I got plenty of rerolls. Uh, Sure, I'll leave it there. So I'm going to do three damage to him. That's enough to finish him off. After the attack, I get to do a recovery. So I'm just going to go ahead and gain my two magic back. And that is it. And then each character, each hero is going to gain four experience for that, for bringing him down. And then my character will get five because I get one for defeating him and then the four for the group. Okay. Um, that is it for that. And then I get to get some new items. So I'm going to get two commons and a, and a rare. So my first common is a silver ring. Action, I can heal three. It's a little... Sure, why not? Second common is studded leather armor. So yes, that is better than my other stuff. And then finally I get a rare and it's uh, the Leprechaun Slippers. Defense three, magic, take the attacking mobs item. Okay, it's not too bad, it's interesting. Okay, and then that's, these will go back in here. He will go away. And I might as well pick that up because I can do that at any time. This will be discarded. 
and these are gone. All right. That is the end of his turn, so that'll finish him off. So then it is over to my rogue to go. So she's going to go ahead and draw three from the bag. She gets a. She gets to take another action. She gets to move two and then attack. And the orange die. Well, unfortunately, she's not going to be able to use that. Could have really used some extra movement on this one. But let's go ahead and start off with... Uh, that's an attack, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one first. Well, no, let's go ahead and do the draw one first. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an extra one. Maybe I'll pick up one here. Nope, they're all attacks. All right. So I'm going to get two actions. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this and my the switch. So I'm going to get a common. And it is a leather helmet. Uh, defense, I get a reroll. Well, I haven't had to use them too much yet, but let's go ahead and take it anyways. All right. Uh, that was my two actions for that. I'm going to go ahead and use this one here. So I'm going to move one, and then I'll pick up this chest here. Gets me two more common items. So I get some bone knuckles. It's an attack one magic, ignore one blue. Okay. And then my second one is monogloves. First time you gain magic, each round gain plus one. Okay. And that is an item. So, or a wearable thing. So that works. That was my second action. Third action, I will go ahead and move into here. And the fourth and final action, I think I will trade and try to get some of this stuff over to the ranger who can get into, because uh, he's got all the extra movement. So I'll get him in there and try to do some um, transmogrification to trade in some of these items and get some better stuff. And, uh, nope, I forgot to move him up into that. I got the level, but I didn't move him up. All right, uh, and that was all her actions. So that uh, will be it for her. So that is her turn. The enemies are going to go. So these guys will move up too. They're not quite within our sight yet. And that is it for the enemies. Uh, upgrade phase. We need 12 experience points. So she's got uh, nine. He's got nine and five. So no, nothing to worry about there. And then finally, we're going to move into here. It's just going to add another epic to the bag. Oop. All right, uh, that will reset everybody. And it's a new round. All right. Um, I think I'll go with the Paladin first. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend a magic to drop my blue in there. Which one do I wanna bless? I'm doesn't really, not really gonna be using them this round. So I'll just leave that as the one that's blessed. I'm gonna place this in between as that's what this allows me to do. And it'll double this up. So heroes that start the move action in this zone gain plus one movement points. So that'll be really handy for that. Uh, and then I will go ahead and go with my first action, which now I'm going to go ahead and move, which gives me another movement point. So I'm going to have three movement points to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and go one, two, and three as my first action. Uh, second action, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the switch. View that. Yes. Yes. Pick up the switch, which is going to open that door and trigger the event. So let's go ahead and handle that real quick. So this is chasing the weak. Spawn one mob in a zone adjacent to the hero with the least health. Players choose the zone. 
remove one from this chamber if possible. So the chamber doesn't have anything. Oh, yes, it does. It does have this one. So that is possible. All right. Um, and then the weakest hero is going to be the rogue. So it's in an adjacent zone. So I'm just going to stick it right in front of them. That'll work out really well. Uh, and it's a level two one. So we have Infernal Imps. And they're going to be coming with a, some Snake Eyes. Okay. The Infernal Imps are going to be there. So I'll drop them in there. Boom. All right. So I'll give her more stuff to kill. All right. And then... There's nothing else to handle in that room now. <laughs> so that, that actually kind of worked out in our favor. And then I do have a treasure on there. Epic would be really cool. Let's do this one here. No, just a comment. All right. Uh, so that is the first thing there. So I'm going to pick up one of these for the second. That will give me a rare. And it's the Seer's Amulet. Uh, anytime look at the top of any roaming monster deck once per round, you may place the card on the bottom of the deck. Um, nah, I'm going to go ahead and leave that down in his inventory. All right. Um, I have one action remaining. So I might as well just do another move action. I'll take this item here. Gets me one more rare. And we have Revises, and they're going to give me a defense magic for rerolls. Again, that's not kind of like, mm, yeah, I'm we'll going to do that. And then I'm going to open the door for the last one. That way I can get out if I wanted to. Okay, uh, that is the end of his turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the rogue to go next as she's got those enemies in her way. Now I'm gonna probably get a bunch of movements now that I've, I don't need it as much. Okay, so she's got, oh, we gotta we get to draw another one after this. We get plus two movement points and plus one movement point. All right, so I got tons of movement. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one here, which lets me draw another one. So I'm gonna use this. Okay, so I get two rerolls on an attack. All right, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that space with her. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right away for the attack. So she's gonna get a yellow and orange. She is in a darkness zone, so she's gonna get that. The imps are gonna pick up one blue and three blacks. Ooh, she's, she's got some, some health problems here. At least that doesn't only hits me for one. Mm, I got what? I got some rerolls there. I get to ignore one slash. Okay. I think I'm okay. I don't know if I need to pop that other thing just yet. Okay. Alright, so we've got two claws. So that's gonna pop one of those imps. Again, I don't think I get experience for that. And he's gonna deal damage to her due to the Kill one imp and then deal two wounds to each hero in the attacker zone once per attacker zone once per round. Boom. It's two. I'm not gonna be able to probably deal both of those. I'm gonna have to pop that health. I should have popped that beforehand. So uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and take all that back and then I'm gonna lose two health from that. So a little bit of a step back. I do apologize for that. I should have done that. That was kind of done. All right. Uh, and then they do have one defense, and then I have all of that. This is going to let me draw another bag, a token from the bag. Why not? Gives me another attack. Sure. All right. Uh, that is that. I'm going to go ahead and reroll this. I got two, at least two rerolls. So let's start with that. And I definitely want to reroll that again because that was terrible. Not much better. All right. So. Best I'm going to do is two, two damage. Um, and then did I have anything that negates armor? That is no. No. So I'm only going to do one damage. That was not too good. Oh, well. One is better than none. 
All right, so one damage there. They are going to lose one of their black dice. And I'm going to go ahead and use this one to get two more rerolls. My attack. It's a little bit better. And also better on their part. Um, so I'm going to spend one of my rerolls to reroll this one. That's better. And and then with my uh, axe here, ignore one slash. The defender suffers it instead of you. So instead of me taking it, he's going to take it. So I'm going to get an extra one there. And that works out really well this time. So I'm going to do three. That'll finish off this guy. And then I pick up an experience point. Next, I'm gonna do four more, and that'll take care of the other minion. So I'm gonna pick up one more. And that'll take care of those two. And I have a couple actions left here, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that one there. Yep, the last one lets me move a bunch. And we'll see if I can finish them off here. Need four hit points. Don't get any rerolls this time unless I spin magic. Okay. So I am going to do that. I'll spend a magic to reroll this yellow. And do two more damage. So that's five damage. So that will finish him off. Gets me an experience plus two more. Gets each one of my other guys two. So they're at 11. Okay. And then I'm going to get a common item, which is a Grimoire. This is a magic attack, gives me a reroll and an orange. So interesting. And then I also pick up the item that they're carrying, which is Snake Eyes. So this is also a magic attack. It's a two hand weapon. All right. That will finish off that. I still have one action remaining. Um, so I think I will move. So I'm going to get two moving points for that. So that puts me at four, plus one for that for five. So one, two, three, four, five. And I could leave, which might not be a bad choice at this point. So I think I will. Why not? All right, so she's out of there. Hopefully that wasn't poor choice on my part, but I only have one mob bearing down on me. So over to my ranger to go next. He is going to move. He gets four movement points. So one, two, three, and then I can do one transmogrification with that as my movements points one. So we've got three commons. So that's going to get me a rare or three starting items, which count as common. So I get a rare which is Poisoned Arrows. Oh, that was a good pickup. This is a ranged attack, deals one wound to the defender. Which is better than what I got right now. Okay, and then I've got a bunch of melee items, or common items. Um, that was my first action. I have two left. At this point, I could transmogify a bunch of stuff, some other stuff, but I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have another mob coming out, but that's gonna be up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and move one, two, three. And as my last action, I'm gonna move up two more. I'm gonna go ahead and sit here and wait because I can't spend magic right now as an action. All right, so then the enemies are gonna go. So they're gonna move to Oops. And then uh, upgrade. I have 14, which is going to trigger her, but she's already gone, so I don't think she gets to do it then. I mean, it shouldn't matter. And the other two don't have enough yet. He's close, but not enough just yet. So upgrade phase is done. We're moving on to the enemy phase. We'd spawn another group of enemies. Um, but I don't think it's going to matter because I think this next round is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and start off with the Paladin. So he's going to go as his first action, one, two, second action, one, two, and third action, I'll spend magic to poof. And same with the Ranger to go. He's going to spend one to 
poof out of there too. So that they've all gone to hell. <laughs> well, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, just, this was the very first mission, so usually kind of light. Interesting on how this one plays. I like the asymmetric aspects of the heroes. I think that's really cool. Um, I did find that the the mobs and the the um, Roaming monsters were a little easier in this one. I'm kind of surprised that they took away the ability for the roaming monster to have a card. At least that's my interpretation of it. I didn't see it in the rules where the roaming monsters gain a card um, from the mobs. So that's interesting. Um, but overall, I had a good time with it. I, I've, I enjoyed Massive Darkness 1, and this one um, so far seems pretty cool as well. I love the new models and miniatures. They look great. And again, I love the heroes with this one. They, they really did a great job with that. There was a lot of bookkeeping, a lot of things to, to track, especially as you got into the higher levels with the older one. And I didn't feel that was the case with this one, at least so far, where I've had all these different things I've had to look all over. Uh, they got rid of the uh, sheet where you will track different things and be able to keep track of all that different stuff, which was a lot of fun, but it also was, again, a lot of bookkeeping. So I definitely like that part for this one for sure. They streamlined a lot of that. A um, couple little things picky here and there, but overall, uh, very good. Uh, another thing I was really excited about, which is a small thing, I guess, for, for some of us that have a lot of board games, the boards did not warp, which is really nice because uh, in the past, Simon or Come On Games, ha some of their boards have warped really bad. Um, and I know that it depends on where it's manufactured and all that, but so far these have stayed flat, which is really nice. No bowing at all. With these, so hopefully you you have the same experience with those. I I know some people each game is a little bit different, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys have think uh, thought of this as well. Have you had a chance to get it to the table? Is this one that you picked up on Kickstarter, or is it one you're thinking about picking up once it goes to retail? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, let me know otherwise what you thought of this. If I made any mistakes, I love hearing from you. And uh, like I said, I am thinking about doing a, a teaching video for this one. So if that's something that you really would like to see, let me know again, drop a comment down below. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. It's one of those things. It's one of the easiest ways you can help my channel is just dropping a comment, hitting that like button if you found this helpful or useful and uh, always uh, hitting that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, that's a huge help as well. And I really appreciate it. So thank you for those of you that are subscribed and for those of you that do take the time to hit that button. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. Let me feedback on them. I do appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.